People hate this world record. Even the swimmer who holds it isn't too happy about it. By the end of this video, you might hate it too. It's a good thing it might be going away soon. This is still the fastest time a human has ever swam the 400 meters. It has stood for more than 14 years and every year that passes, people grow angrier and angrier. This is the first swimming event of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Two swimmers are very close to the record and can finally make everyone happy again. You might be wondering why people hate it. World records are a testament to what humans are capable of. And even though technology is always improving and helping humans move faster, we limit the amount of technology allowed to help break those world records. We get angry when we consider that technology was helping too much. The 400 freestyle world record is filled with these stories of technology helping too much especially with this world record. I'm going to make a video about every swimming event at the Olympics this year. The goal is that through these videos, we can enjoy every swimming event even more and hopefully learn to swim better in the process. It all started at NASA. They discovered a material that was buoyant, water repellent, and could be pasted on fabrics. Speedo saw this and said, that's really cool, but I bet you can't do a spacesuit for swimmers. NASA thought about it and accepted the bet. They pasted chunks of this material into the full body swimsuits and they had a finished product just before the 2008 Olympics. As always, swimmers were fast at the Olympics, but this time they were flying. 98% of all the medals were by swimmers who wore the swimsuit the laser. It was the fastest swimsuit and the swimmers knew it. Many world records were broken, but not the 400 freestyle. That record from 2002 survived the 2008 Laser Olympics. Then one year later, other companies got a hold of this material and said, what if we make the entire swimsuit out of this stuff? The result? All the swimming records were being demolished. The red line that represented the world record looked slow. And yet, the 400 freestyle record remained intact. But not for long. On July 26, 2009, we would witness something that would change swimming forever. Not only that, it was the first time I and many others would come to think about this question. Can technology go too far? The first event of the 2009 Swimming World Championships was the 400 freestyle. Ian Thorpe's world record, considered at one time magical, Rowdy, 340.08. Maybe there's a chance it could go tonight. I, it, it would shock me to see. The German swimmer, Paul Biedermann, was wearing a full tech suit. The suit made his body more compact, which improved his blood flow, more buoyant which improved the body position, and more water repellent, which reduced friction. Even with those advantages, the world record still seemed impossible to break. It was just too fast. No one knows exactly by how much the supersuits helped. Even if it helped Paul by one one hundredth of a second, this is all he needed to break the record. The world record was 340.08, and he touched the wall in 340.08. 0 .07. 0 0.07. No one has ever swam that fast again. And people were furious. I think the suit is problematic, said the German. I think the suits make us swim really fast. I honestly think it was worth about two seconds in this race. I think the suits destroy a little bit of the real sport. It's not anymore about technique. I really believe all the new suits should be banned. If it wasn't for the tech suits that day, the 400 freestyle world record would now be the longest standing record in swimming by far. And that was only the beginning. After that, another 42 world records were broken in just eight days of competition. 147 world records in total that year. People demanded a stop to this technology. It was taking over the sport of swimming. FINA finally announced the banning of the tech suits, something they had never done before. The technologically aided world records would remain valid. Swimming is still a relatively young sport, 
the limits are still far enough, so the records from that era have been falling one by one. Each year we are getting closer to erasing all of them. Only eight of them remain. The women have managed to erase all of them except for one. Men are still seven world records away from erasing that era. In 2012, Sung Yan almost broke the 400 freestyle world record. But people wouldn't be happy if he would have gotten it. Allegedly, he was also enhanced by technology. Sung Yang is serving a four-year suspension by the World Anti-Doping Agency for a doping test incident in 2018. After breaking several testing protocols, Sun's mother ordered security guards to destroy a veil of Sun's blood taken in the nearby clubhouse, according to witnesses. Sun Yan breaking the war record wouldn't have made people happy. Now that I come to think about it, people were upset way before 2009 for the same reason. Too much technology. The record belonged to Ian Thorpe. He broke it in 2002 with a full bodysuit. This was not nearly as advanced as the ones in 2009. I don't think it made him faster, otherwise many swimmers would have worn it. But people at the time felt like it gave him an unfair advantage. Some angry people still comment on that video we did about him. Even before 2002, people were angry. The first time the 400 meters was swam at the Olympics was in a lake. That was in 1904. At the next Olympics, they constructed a swimming pool for the first time. And I am sure that people thought that this world record was not valid because the swimming pool was too much of a technological advantage. And they were probably correct, it was a big advantage. It was probably the biggest advantage. Look at the progression of the world record since then. According to my data, an average competitive 12-year-old swimmer can swim 10 seconds faster and those early world records. The best 12-year-old can swim faster than the 1947 world record. It's not only the swimming pool that has changed. A lot has changed since then. Some of the most impactful technologies that allow a 12-year-old now to beat the 1947 world record are underwater cameras, the accessibility of those videos, and the improvement of the knowledge of the coaches and swimmers. Those three things have improved consistently. Even from 2009, there is better footage, easier access to that footage, and better knowledge of how to train these athletes. Ahmed qualified in eighth place for the final of the 400 free at the Olympics in Tokyo. This means he was the slowest man to qualify for the final. Because of this, he swam the final in lane eight. The fastest swimmers are usually in the middle lanes, so no one expected Ahmed to even be top three. But he won the race by 16 hundredths of a second. At the World Championships of 2023, everyone was ready to see him win and maybe break the world record. Everyone except Samuel Short. They both wanted to win badly. They pushed each other to their limits. Ultimately, Samuel Short touched the wall first. They were both very close to breaking the world record. The only three people who have swum faster than these two are Sun Yang, Ian Thorpe, and Paul Bitterman. Many people see Sun, Ian, and Paul as the fastest 400 swimmers that ever lived with the help of some kind of technology that is now illegal. Ahmed and Samuel are going to try to swim without that help on July 27th of this year, 2024. In a sense, this world record has become man versus machine. Too much technology versus human ingenuity and perseverance. We will have to wait until then to find out who wins the next round. Right after that race, the swimming's cold war begins. USA versus Australia. There are bad things and good things about technology. One of the best things about technology is that I could share this video with you. Everything you need to swim better. The comment section of that video is getting ridiculous. So we made little awards for the best ones. Like this one. If we like your comment enough, it will get its own little award. See you there. Swim fast.